Judging just by your biomarkers and blood tests is sort of going at it blind. Hello friends! Since the recent deaths in the bodybuilding world, people have been suggesting that maybe the IFBB or the NPC, the organizations that ma manage the bodybuilding industry, whether they should institute mandatory blood tests for all competitors. In this video, I want to tell you guys why a genetics test may be more informative for competitors than early blood tests. But before I do, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, like the video, and comment on the video for the sake of the algorithm. Now let's get started. Now what do blood tests tell you? They tell you a value for a biomarker, that is a marker of your biology. This numerical value really matters except in extreme situations when the number is very extreme. So for example, when you have liver values like an ALT or AST that are in the several hundreds, at that point you know the person is close to liver failure, no matter what their genetics say. But except in these extreme scenarios, genetics really qualify what we see in blood tests. So while we talked about this before, while somebody else may have a high LDL cholesterol and not be as at risk of heart disease as others uh, because of protective polymorphisms, others can have the reverse where they have very good or seemingly good biomarkers, but they have genetic predispositions for ill health that these biomarkers may be masking in the short term because we use them or we judge them according to average numbers. I didn't want this video to be too long. I wanted it to be a short video like the rest we've been doing to try to give people an idea that they may think about. Here I want to give you three examples of genes that wouldn't necessarily show up in a young person's blood test. They would, you wouldn't be able to tell that they had these genes, but the genes make the biomarkers that you find on the blood test mean something different. First, there's one called the PNPLA3 gene. This gene is the most impactful gene towards fatty liver disease known to man, or most impactful genetic polymorphism rather. It's very common among Central Americans, particularly in Mexico, and is thought to be the leading reason why cirrhosis and fatty liver disease and liver cancer are more common in Central America than other places of the world. If you have that gene, what you see on your liver enzyme markers means much more to you than the rest of us. That's one example. Another example uh, could be found among African Americans and people of African descent. It's called the APOL1 variant. That's A-P-O-L-1. If you search for this online, and if you have your blood tests and if you're of uh, African descent, do check if you have it. If you have the APOL1 variant, you are at much, much increased risk for kidney disease. So much so, that, in fact, that's why the EGFR, the estimated glomerular filtration rates on blood tests, are different if you're African-American or not African-American. They're trying to take account for the increased uh, frequency of APOL1 among the African-American community. A third one example that I can give you is the APOE4 variant. You guys have probably heard of this. It's APOE4. There's an APOE3, there's an APOE2, and an APOE4. If you're homozygous for the APOE4, you have a much, much increased rate of developing dementia and Alzheimer's disease, as well as plaque around your arteries and cardiovascular disease in general. Now, let me tell you, these variants are not rare. I've had guests on my podcast who I've looked into their genetics after they attended my podcast and they had the APOE4 variants. Surprisingly, some of them don't care that much. They see that they have the APOE4 variant and do not immediately jump on a statin, which I find shocking and bewildering because of how uh, dangerous the APOE4 variant is. So anyway, what's the long and short of it all? Well, if you're a bodybuilder that is worried about how your lifestyle may affect your health, Judging just by your biomarkers and blood tests is sort of going at it blind. You need to know a little bit about your individual biology. Thank God we live in 2021 and you can learn quite a bit about your individual biology quite quickly with probably less than $250 spent on 23andMe or Ancestry.com. I would highly recommend that you guys do this and search for variants like the APOL1, like PNPLA3, like APOE4. Find out what you're most at risk for. Anyway guys, I hope this was helpful for you and I hope to see you again tomorrow.